Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you a Dollar Tree DIY that I think is going to help keep you a bit more organized for 2020. And it is using these enormous, yeah, these enormous, oh my goodness, it is rolled up, oh my gosh. How does anybody even use this this way unless you tack it up? These enormous wall calendars, only I am not going to keep it this size. I'm going to make you something that is going to be small, compact, something that you can use month to month. And what I love about these new uh, wall calendars is that they are dry erase and there's no dates on them. There's not even a year. So this is one of those calendars and this is one of those decor pieces that you can utilize for years to come, which I love. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it. And let me show you what I have in mind for you using this enormous wall calendar that you would probably just see in an office or in a classroom, but we're going to do something crafty with it. So let's get to it. For this DIY, I'll be using three 8x10 frames that I got from the Dollar Tree. I picked up this specific frame because it was simple, it was plain, and it's going to work perfect for this DIY. I'm going to discard the glass and the cardboard from each of the frames because we don't need it. Today I'll be using this Quick Grip Glue by Beacon. This is a permanent adhesive glue that bonds to everything. What's great about this glue is it gets tacky super fast, it dries even faster, and it dries clear. I'm going to place some of the glue along the side of my frame because I'm going to glue all three of these frames together side by side. Then using a jumbo popsicle stick, I'm going to place some glue on one side of the stick and I'm going to place the stick where the two frames join together. And this is just to kind of reinforce it and to really hold these frames together good so they're not flimsy. Even when you glue frames like this together, if you don't put the popsicle stick in the back to reinforce it, they can bend because there's not a surface that they're really bonding to that's real big. And so this is an easy way to really get these frames to stay together and get a nice, good, sturdy frame. So you can see here that after about an hour and a half, my frame is good and dry. This is not coming apart. Instead of painting these frames today, I'm gonna be covering them with this fabric. Now this fabric is what we are redoing Allie's room in. We really did base the whole theme of her room off of this fabric here because she really wanted to go with that aqua and gray. And so I'm gonna be covering all three of these frames with this fabric. Now, if you wanna paint these frames, you very well can. I just really wanted to use fabric because one, when doing a DIY like this, when you're painting it, you're gonna see the seams where all of the frames meet to where when you use a fabric, it kinda of comes out seamless and flawless and smooth like it's all one piece. And that's kind of what I wanted to go for for this. And I wanted to add just a touch of color to tie in her comforter and her curtains. And so I thought that since I had extra fabric, this was the perfect DIY to do that with. And so to cover these frames, I'm just gonna use some Mod Podge. I'm gonna give the front of these frames a good coating of Mod Podge, then I'm just gonna lay the fabric down on the frames. Now, because the Mod Podge is wet, the fabric is gonna stick to it nicely. So just kind of run your fingers along it, make sure your fabric is nice and tight. And once you've got it laid out, again, you're gonna wanna lay down a second coat of Mod Podge over the fabric because this is really just gonna help adhere it to the frame a bit better. It's gonna harden and stiffen that fabric and it's gonna make it a lot easier to cut the excess fabric off. You're gonna wanna leave the fabric in the center of the frames until the Mod Podge is dried because it's gonna make it just a lot easier all together to glue the fabric to the back of the frames. Once it's dry, if you take a razor and you cut from corner to corner, kind of make a slit in the fabric like an X, then you can take and cut 
the excess fabric off, but you wanna leave about an inch of fabric so it'll wrap around to the back of the frames. Then if you place just a bead of hot glue along that inside edge of the back of the frame where the glass would go, you can easily fold your fabric over to the back side and it folds nicely in there and it's gonna give you nice clean edges. So you can see once you flip it over how nice it's gonna look and how, like I was saying, it looks like it's all one piece. Here's a quick tip. Before you fold in your outside edges, if you cut the corners in, just kind of taper them in the way I'm doing here, you're getting rid of extra fabric. So when you fold over your sides, you're not gonna have the corners where you're needing to fold over the fabric or angle it in because you've just removed all of that excess fabric. So now all of your fabric's just gonna lay flat and smooth. Now taking two eight by 10 pieces of foam board, this is what I cut out of a 24 by 36 inch piece that I got from the Dollar Tree. And using one of Crafters Square adhesive cork sheets. Oh my word, I've been waiting to do a DIY using this. I'm so excited. Using the foam board as a guide, I'm just gonna mark where I need to cut the cork sheet and I'm gonna save the extra cork sheet piece because this is valuable stuff here and I might need this piece in an upcoming DIY, so I'm gonna save it. Once I cut it, you can see that this paper easily removes off the back and I'm gonna stick it to the foam board. Now using the foam board for this step is really important because push pins will be going into this cork sheet and I think that the foam board is gonna help the push pins have something to go into if that makes any sense. So using cardboard or the backing to the frame isn't gonna work. And for the second eight by 10 piece of foam board, I'm gonna just cover it with a piece of fabric, the same fabric that I'm using for the frame. If you wanna switch up the fabric, you can. Because I had some extra on hand, I decided just to use what I had. And so again, if you taper in the corners, it's gonna make it a lot easier and cleaner to fold in the fabric to the back side. I'll also be using one of these dry erase boards by Jot that you can also get from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the pen and the holder and I'm gonna set these aside because we're gonna use them later. And I'm also gonna remove this plastic edging around the outside. It removes super easy. The adhesive is really light. Then using one of the cardboard inserts to the frames, I'm gonna use this just as a guide, as a template for size. I'm gonna trace it then using a ruler and a straight edge razor, I'm gonna cut off the excess cardboard. If you wanna use scissors, you can. I just found that it's a lot easier to use a nice fresh blade and a ruler because you get a nice clean edge. These are the three pieces that I'll be inserting into the frames, the dry erase board, the cork board, and the fabric covered foam board. For the foam board, I'm gonna put this on top, and because it's thicker, because not only did we use the foam board, but we covered it in fabric so it's thicker and the prongs aren't going to go down, I'm gonna use hot glue around the inside edge and that'll hold it just fine. For the cork board, it easily fits into the frame and you can press the prongs down and it'll hold it into place. And for the dry erase board on the bottom here, I'm gonna do the same thing. For the top frame, I wanted to put a calendar and I was having trouble finding a calendar that would fit till I saw this huge, undated, dry erase wall calendar that Dollar Tree is carrying. It is a very simple calendar, which I like. There's no dates, there's no years. So it's something that can be used year after year, only because of the size, to me, it's just not usable unless it's used in an office or a classroom. So I figured I'd just take and cut down each of the months and by doing that and making them individual months, it'll easily fit into that top frame, making it interchangeable month after month. Here's another quick tip, because this is unruly, it's not manageable because it was rolled up and no matter what I do, it's not gonna lay flat. If you take an iron on the lowest temperature with no steam and you iron the back of this, it'll flatten it out perfectly. I didn't wanna go the route of using a clip or a clamp to hold the calendar in place, so I decided to go the route 
of these Velcro dots by Crafters Square. 20 come in this pack. You can get this at the Dollar Tree. And for the first month, which is January, I'm gonna place both sides of the Velcro dots, which is the rough side and the fuzzy side, onto each of the corners of this calendar. So that way when I place the calendar on the frame, the one side is gonna stick. And so that way every calendar after, I'll just have to put the fuzzy side on the calendar because the rough side will already be on this piece. So I can interchange the calendars month after month. I didn't like the way the silver clamps from the Dollar Tree look that you can get in the office section, but I still felt like something was missing. I felt like this needed something that made it look like it was hanging. And so I decided to go the route of these mini clothes pins. This is a multicolor pack from Crafter Square. And I just decided to add two of the white ones to the top. It's not even glued to the frame. It's just on the top of the calendar itself just to give I guess the illusion that it's holding the calendar. And so I'm happy with the way that that looks. I think it was just the touch that this needed. Here on the cork board, you can use these clear thumbtacks and because we use the foam board, they're gonna stick nicely and it'll give it something to stick into versus cardboard. I'm gonna place the pen in the center here so it can be used for the calendar or the dry erase board. And what's great is that the calendar and the dry erase board both came with a pen and they have an eraser on the cap so you have an extra pen. The calendar also came with these window clings. They're not stickers so they're reusable, which I thought was really fun and it has a lot of different clings that you can use for birthdays, traveling, pay bills, and whatnot which will come in useful and so these stick very easily to the dry erase board and like I said they can be removed easily as well and I still felt like this was missing something and so I decided to take these daisies that I had in my stash that I got at Michael's these are in the dollar bins I think you can get a six pack for two dollars maybe and I thought that these were the perfect finishing touch to add to a couple of the corners of this I guess command center I'm gonna call it and now I am happy with this I think that this is such a fun piece it's not a huge piece that's gonna take up a lot of room but it has three useful sections to it it's got the calendar which is really useful it's got the cork board that you can put notes or bills into with thumbtacks and it's also got the dry erase board at the bottom that if you need to leave a note or make your grocery list you easily can and I think that all of these pieces are very useful pieces and the outcome of this I think is going to look adorable in Allison's room. This is one of those pieces that is such a versatile piece that it can really be done to suit any decor style. And that there is what I did with this enormous wall calendar that really I don't know who has the amount of space on their wall to put this and why you would even put this on there because even in an office, you gotta do something with this. And so I figured that just by cutting this up and doing what I did with it, I thought it was the perfect way to utilize this awesome dry erase calendar. And it's one of those pieces that not only is budget friendly, but it's a piece that you can use year after year because there's no dates on it. I love pieces like that. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY using this enormous wall calendar that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody. Bye.